That's all, folks. Russian border got breached once again. The Z soldiers started to surrender in Belgorod, which, by the way, is the territory of Russia. And Putin gave an order to use civilians as human shield. Total nonsense. This is ridiculous. But more about all of this in just a couple of minutes. What's up, investors? It's the Russian dude. And let's get straight to the point and talk about some ridiculous Russian propaganda. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So, battle babushkas. Long time no see. Mrs. Uh, Battle Babushka's but here you are once again, made it to the episode of the Russian Dude. And today, one of them before the presidential elections of Putin, I mean presidential elections in Russia, <laughs> well, it's pretty much the same thing, she did a tattoo with her favorite person in the entire world. And no, this is not her kids, these are not her grandchildren, this is the Vladimir Putin, who probably does not even know about her existence. Unless these battle babushkas are his personal project. And just, guys, I have to make a disclaimer. The next uh, several seconds are going to be pretty erotic. Because battle babushka is gonna show exactly the place where this tattoo is located. It is on her chest, so you have been warned if you don't want to see it. Close your eyes for a couple of seconds, but for the ones who are brave enough, well, here you go. And speaking about Putin and his own elections, uh, this is also something worthy of ridiculous Russian propaganda. He recently made a statement or a speech to the people of Russia saying that Please, everyone, you should vote, the future depends on you, because all the power in Russia is towards people. You, people, are the ones who decide how Russia is going to develop in the near future. I mean, like, yeah, that's what he said. And guys, so right now it's a secret. Uh, today is my wife's birthday. And I wanted to tell you that this whole merch thing, this is her, entirely her project. I only do some designs from time to time, but the merch itself, the website, it is her own project. It is her birthday, so let's make a surprise for her. Guys, uh, please go ahead and check if there's anything you like. I'm not forcing you to order anything, just yeah, go ahead to see if you like something. But she'll be very, very happy to see those orders coming in whenever she's gonna wake up tomorrow. So yeah, and by the way, if you are a patron, don't forget you do have a permanent discount. Just go ahead and check uh, the discount code on the patron under any of the posts. So yeah, thank you guys so much once again, she'll be very happy. And now let's continue. Oh, and by the way, also forgot she also does have a merch dedicated Instagram page, TR Dude Store. So yeah, you can go ahead and follow it as well. Thank you so much. All right, now back to speaking in full voice. And let me give you a very quick update, just one little interesting thing that appeared in the south. Then we're gonna talk about the situation in the east. And then finally, once again, Russian borders being breached. And so yeah, this interesting thing from the south, if you remember, there's this Jankoi airfield located in Crimean Peninsula. So long story short, Russians brought a couple more planes to this airfield, which as you can see from this satellite, they were not present previously, which basically means once again, they brought new planes, fighter jets, bombers and so on. But another interesting thing is that if you look really closely, you can see that some of these planes are actual just uh, drawings. <laughs> so yeah, Russians did not just bring military planes, they also brought, brought some uh, Picassos, <coughs> Da Vinci's, I guess, and things like this to try and bamboozle Ukrainians, but you can never bamboozle a satellite image. And so yes, this was pretty much the only thing from the south. Now let's go to the east, and first we stop near Kharkov front line, where a Ukrainian one single FPV drone was able to destroy the entire military warehouse of Russians. This is... Uh, very significant, I mean, just one drone, except against the entire construction. Next, uh, we got closer to Liman frontline, where we can see Russians absolutely not wasting any single minute, and they're trying to demine the fields in front of them. 
but they're not using the conventional methods of demining them. Instead, they just literally bring a couple of their infantry fighting vehicles, they drive across the open field and, uh, well, that's how they find the mines. Besides that, as we get closer to Bakhmut frontline, Ukrainians were able to destroy at least two armored vehicles of Russians next to Yahidnya, and then they were able to repel pretty big three assaults against Chasev Yar and Klishivka located right here. But wait, it's not over yet, because also reportedly a pretty big concentration of Russian forces have been destroyed far behind the front lines in Luhansk region approximately in this area, and just like in the past, Russians were simply standing in the middle of the open field, they were doing some military exercises, learning how to march, things like this, and well, as a result, reportedly there are at least 10 eliminated Z soldiers. And ultimately is the video from Avdivka, where once again Russians try to breach the front lines and try to expand their controlled areas, and so they send an assault group along with a couple of armored vehicles. Well, Ukrainians were like, okay guys, like uh, this is getting ridiculous, we already know what to do, so uh, let's, uh, let's do it. So they took uh, their, one of their Bradley's infantry fighting vehicles along with some uh, infantry, and they met those Russians with fire. Just one Bradley was able to successfully and so easily repel the entire assault. By Russians, these two armored vehicles were fully destroyed, the infantry started to run away. Not that many of them were able to do it before falling asleep forever. And so this just once again uh, is a proof, just once again shows you how influential sometimes Western military vehicles can be for the Ukrainian army, Bradley infantry fighting vehicle, particularly in our case. And yeah, just once again, this particular and just, yeah, once again, this particular defense against advancing Russians, Ukrainians, uh, they were able to film the entire counter operation. The full video is very interesting to see, it's very educational and pretty much textbook defense. Full uncensored version, as always, can be found on my Patreon, guys. Link down below. Thank you so much. And so, yes, now to... And so yes, now finally let's go to the main event of the video, that the Russian border got breached once again, and then the response of Putin, which is absolutely humiliating, unfortunately, towards the civilians in Russia, but still this is what he decided to do. And before we can talk about this, guys, if you don't mind helping me out with the YouTube algorithm, can you please simply like this video and subscribe to my channel? That's literally as much as I can ask you to do. Guys, thank you so much, and let's do another review of something whenever we reach 273,000. You can also follow me on Instagram to see how I live outside of YouTube, the link is down below. And so yes, the Russian border got breached once again, also in Belgorod region next to Sparadushina small settlement, and reportedly the Russian freedom fighters, which are mainly consist of the Freedom of Russian Legion, Russian Volunteer Corps and Siberian Battalion, they brought at least 30 units of personnel and at least a couple of armored vehicles with, with at least one Bradley. And according to the local residents, pretty much the entire last day there were extremely loud noises, once again, all the way from the morning almost until the end of the day, there were combat activities between the Russian separatists and the Russian conventional army. And according to the local residents, there were extremely loud noises pretty much throughout the entire last day. And so those Russian separatists, they were effectively destroying, and mil uh, destroying military targets of Russians. Once again, they were extremely protective of the civilians. They did not want them to be hurt or anything like this. And just as uh, for example, right here is the video where Russian representatives of the Freedom of Russia Legion, they're able to destroy another multiple launch rocket system of Russians called Grad. Besides that, in cooperation between the Freedom of Russia Legion and the Siberian Battalion, they were also able to destroy two more armored personnel carriers and one more infantry fighting vehicles of Russians. And then some Russian military correspondents, they even claimed that those anti-Putin Russians, they bought some helicopters to bring their paratroopers, and they landed in Kozinka, located right here, and they started pushing Russians further away from the border. But just yeah, like mentioned previously, every representative of these anti-Putin Russians, they did claim that one of their main priorities is to protect civilians and not let any of them to be injured, that is why they made several claims to start evacuating pretty much as soon as possible, because they said that they will not stop, they will continue achieving 
achieving their goals, with the ultimate goal going all the way inside the capital of Russia, Moscow. And just in these last two days, they were able to already achieve pretty significant progress, such as, for example, according to them, they went approximately a dozen kilometers deeper inside the territory of Russia, uh, facing pretty much little to none resistance from the Russian, con Russian conventional forces. And one of their biggest statements is that on March 15th, pretty much today, they will launch a massive, the biggest so far, attack against the Putin army. That is why for this night alone they opened a humanitarian corridor in Belgrad and Kursk regions for civilians to evacuate. And they once again urged them to do it as soon as possible. And well, luckily, this is what some of the local residents this is what they did. Some of them, they started running by food. They took as many supplies, documents, all this kind of stuff with them. And they started evacuating those regions to go as far north as possible. Some people obviously decided to evacuate by cars. That's why, as you can see from this video, there are very big lines for the gas stations. But that's not even remotely, I would say, the most important thing, because the most important thing is that a lot of local residents during the evacuation, they did mention that regular Russian army, and get, get this, they did not allow them to leave. Simple as that. They said, you are not going anywhere. The situation is under control. Turn around, go back home, sit tight, don't make any sounds, that's an order. Which, if you think about this, like, why would they do it? Russians came to Ukraine to allegedly protect Ukrainians from Ukrainians. And now, right now, is the military activities right on their territory, on their very own territory, with their very own civilians. And they are not even letting them evacuate. The Russian army does not need to do anything. Just let them pass. Just let them pass. Simple as that. No, they say, you cannot turn around. Which once again makes me think, and I'm not the only one in these assumptions and conclusions, that most likely the military of Russia received an order from the top, potentially even from Putin himself, to use, however barbaric, however unbelievable it's gonna sound, to use these civilians as a human shield. Just in case there are casualties during combat activities between the freedom fighters of the of Russians, and then the regular conventional Z army, just in case there are any casualties among civilians. Putin and the Russian propaganda will immediately show those pictures, show those videos, and blame Ukraine, saying, look what they are doing. This is exactly why we need to fight against them, and pretty much to justify even further combat activities on the territory of Ukraine. Let me know, guys, in the comments if any of this makes sense to you. I mean, otherwise, why would the army not let civilians escape? And well, when this is the attitude of the authorities towards their own people, no wonder some Russian soldiers, whenever they start to hear this information, they finally start questioning why are they even fighting? Are they fighting for this regime or are they fighting for their families? Because if they do fight for their families, as soon as their own relatives and friends become endangered, there is nothing what the authorities are doing to protect them. And in the meantime, those people, those soldiers are risking their lives to literally just protect the Putin's regime. Simple as that. And for this reason, right here is the video, and this is an undeniable fact. No matter what the Russian propaganda will tell you, this is the video right here, we can see it with our own eyes, that some of the Russian soldiers inside Belgrade are currently surrendering. They are waving their white flags, they are following those freedom fighters, and they say that, guys, we are not gonna fight you, be careful, proceed with care, like, we're not gonna stop you, just don't kill us, like, simple as that. Finally, hopefully, some of the Russian soldiers started to realize what actually they're fighting for, and it is just my hopeful assumption and expectation that more and more of them will understand this sooner rather than later. And so yes, guys, I've been pretty much extensively covering this border breach in my last couple of videos, so if you missed the previous one, please go ahead and watch it, so you have all the details and you stay fully in loop of these events. And please subscribe to my channel for the future updates, because I do not think this border breach will go is gonna stop anytime soon. Hopefully not, hopefully they will follow their goals and go all the way until Moscow. Also, don't forget, it's once again my wife's birthday, so please 
please go ahead and check some merch. Let's make your very, very happy. The link is down below. Thank you so much by patrons for your support and see you tomorrow.